Now, I suspect that the, um, that the uh, PMR, the virtual reality that uh, is that the larger conscious system evolved for us to play in, was probably done before it had learned this lesson of growing up that it was struggling with, just as we struggle with this lesson today. Because you see, it started as potential, just potential, with free will to make choices. Consciousness requires time, or there's no such thing as a choice, because a choice defines before and after. Consciousness needs free will, because without a free will, there are no choices. There is no choice to make if you can't make a choice. See, free will defines choices exist. So the system now needed to find ways for its individuated units of consciousness to evolve and to grow up and to have experience because it had the experience of all the, of all the individuated units of consciousness. And the individuated units of consciousness had experiences of each other but that wasn't going anywhere very quickly. That's what I describe as the big chat room where they could pass information back and forth, but that's about all they could do. There wasn't a lot of consequences to that game. So the virtual reality was created that we call home, we call our universe so for the individuated units of consciousness to play in. Now, the larger consciousness system was still in the process of growing up and it tried to order these individuated units of consciousness as they played avatars in our, in our system. At least this is now, this is a, um, a little bit of um, conjecture. Okay, now this is a bit of conjecture of mine, but when I explained to uh, a friend of mine, Eric Cunningham, uh, who was a history professor and professor of Catholic studies at, uh, at uh, Gonzaga University, this idea of the larger conscious system having to grow up, having to uh, mature, if you will, now in a social system of its own creation. What, you know, what it found out, of course, in doing this is that it, it had to let the individual units of conscious free will work out the way they did. It could not control them because a, a, you optimize a social system with love, with caring, not with force, not with manipulation. Well, it hadn't learned that yet. And as I explained that to, to Eric, that the system was still in the process of learning these things, he suddenly said, oh, that explains a very big mystery that I've had for a long time. There's this schizophrenia between the New Testament, which is about love and turning the other cheek, and the Old Testament is about this angry and jealous God that, you know, demands things of his people. And those two just seem to be completely incompatible with each other. So that got me to thinking as well. That's why I said it was conjecture that the larger conscious system produced our virtual reality before it had fully grown up yet. It was uh, sort of like we are, enough that it could make some amazing things. It could build some amazing things just as we can, but still full of enough ego and enough fear to haven't yet grown up to the point of becoming love. So now we have this angry and jealous God, you know, turning, turning people who defy its orders into pillars of salt and, you know, so on and so on, you know, destroying the, you know, the enemies of its chosen people, and we have all of this, which I had previously just written off as men making God in their own image. Men have egos, men have fears, so they just imagine that that's the way God was too, sort of like them. So uh, instead of that being the only possibility, now there's another possibility, and that is that indeed their interaction with the larger consciousness system, which ancient people often interpreted as God, was indeed true. You had a larger consciousness with an ego, with fears, um, anger, 
and wanted to wanted things to be the way it wanted them to be. Was still trying to manage a system with its own overlay of the structure that it thought was best, rather than letting all the pieces just interact however they would. So if that's the case, then that's the transition between the very ancient writings of the Old Testament and the much newer writings of the New Testament in that indeed there may have been an angry, you know, jealous, uh, manipulative, uh, demanding, larger consciousness system early on in our beginnings here in this virtual reality we call our physical reality, you know, PMR, that I call it physical matter reality. So I thought that was an that was an interesting, uh, it a, is. Very, a very interesting thought. It is. Yeah. Would you say that you could apply that to perhaps even more ancient beliefs, cultures, myths, and things that other civilizations, other peoples, going back even further experience? Sure. And also, can you take this larger consciousness system's potential back before it split into individuated units of consciousness and see that the potential that it contained was given to us as well. In addition, the non-physical uh, individuated units of consciousness, could that explain the stories that you often hear of uh, the fights of good between good and evil, so to speak, but perhaps not in those terms. Mm -hmm. Is that that conflict yeah. as well? Yeah, well, that's a whole string of questions there, but I'll, let me try to work them off. Um, yes, I think if we look at ancient literature, often the god is gods of war. You know, gods weren't necessarily, you know, love beings uh, in, in all of the ancient tales we have. They tend to be... Um, a little more uh, demanding and and uh, you know, full of ego and fear and beliefs themselves. So yes, the ancient descriptions of men's gods do tend to fit that pattern a lot more. But yet some of it, of course, was very benevolent. But then, of course, so are we. You see, we are full of fear and ego and belief but yet we can produce some beautiful things and some good things. And we have some, you know, terrific philosophies and ideas and thoughts. So just because this larger conscious system wasn't grown up yet, doesn't mean that it wasn't capable of doing some amazing and very productive things. It just means that it wasn't grown up yet. It could still function on a very high level of, of uh, creativity and, and do magnificent things, have big thoughts, understand a lot, but at that, uh, what we call our, our subconscious, it wasn't necessarily all at the being level. It was working out of its intellectual level. It still had fears, it still had ego, you see. So it was able to create some magnificent things, some good things like our virtual reality, but it also had these fears. Now, yes, we are a chip off that old block. Right? In the fact that the larger conscious system just started as a potential. And then when it became conscious as a cellular automata, it had the potential to make choices. We call that free will. This free will can allow it to make bad choices as well as good choices. It's just potential. Potential can go either way. It can de-evolve or evolve either way, you see. So we are the same way. Now here we are, chips off that old block, we're pieces of that larger consciousness system, and we just have potential. And our potential can also go either way. Now here we are, pieces of potential in a big chat room. And we're chatting with each other. Can I say, no, uh, no, nothing very difficult, nothing very hard, nothing very demanding, nothing with much consequence. So we get a virtual reality. The way that works is the system decided to evolve a virtual reality that had more 
experience, more ethical and moral choice, more uh, uh, feedback, more um, consequences that were important to those individuals. So it started with the rule set and it started with the, with the initial conditions, as I've talked about before in other, other places, and it let that evolve. And it played all the characters itself until this evolution produced creatures such as us, or maybe things less than us, you know, critters, animals, things that made choices. Anything that made a choice then was something that an individuated consciousness could log into, could run, could uh, make the choices for that. So when they did that, then, then that individuated unit of consciousness would make those choices and the larger conscious system would stop making those choices for that, that critter or that being. Well, eventually we evolved out of this virtual reality and the simulation, and we have a lot of choices that we can make, a lot of free will choices. So entities came in droves, and I think they were very highly encouraged by the system to join this game, to log on, to pick an avatar and play that avatar. As they did, think of the transition they went through. They had potential to be whatever they were. They had been nowhere ever except in a big chat room. Suddenly they logged on and now they are 100% immersed in this avatar. The only data stream they get is the data produced by this avatar's computed census. That's it. They only get data of what that avatar sees, hears, smells, feels, and tastes. Nothing else. They don't take a break and go have lunch. You know, they don't have bathroom breaks. This is consciousness. They are 100% immersed with no other data stream coming to them except what is created in this virtual reality with their avatar. Now, given that, they find themselves suddenly out of the chat room into a place where survival is hard, where they have to eat, where other things want to eat them, where they need shelter, where they need to, uh, to survive as a species, they need to procreate. So they have all sorts of pressures now, all sorts of things that were very difficult and what did they develop in response to that? Fear. They had to stay alive long enough to procreate, long enough to find food, long enough to, uh, you know, find shelter. So it was a very violent and a very difficult space to be in because that's just the way it evolved in this big simulator. That was the way the game was played. So when these rather naive individuated units of consciousness suddenly enrolled in this game that you couldn't just, like I say, put it on pause and walk away from. They were it. They began to identify themselves as the avatar. You see, the free will awareness unit is the part that logs on and it only comes with its quality of consciousness. It doesn't come with a memory. So it had no memory. It had no sense of consciousness being anything other than this avatar. It identified as the avatar, and it was about to be eaten by something bigger than it. It was about to be killed by another of its own species to take the stuff that it had. It had all these things to deal with, which created fear. It created ego, the sense of I, you know, I need, I want, I must have. And it created a lot of beliefs about how to get those things and keep those things and what you had to do to stay alive. So that's where our fear comes from. It's because we started as potential. Potential in a big chat room it doesn't really uh, dig very deeply into its possibilities because the interactions are extremely limited. But potential in this virtual reality as, a, as an immersed, totally immersed uh, piece of consciousness in an avatar, now that has some possibilities for dramatic choices that were never there before. That so. draws out the 
potential to its highest level. Right, that really lets that potential express itself in all sorts of ways, but because the environment was so violent and difficult, then it expressed itself in fear. But that fear, you know, that being, also had caring. It had caring for its, for its children, it had caring for its mates, it had caring for its tribe, it had community relationships among its group, and there were good things there too. See, it wasn't just all bad and awful. There was relationship, there was connection, there was caring at a level much, much greater. You see, talk about potential that draws you out. Well, the potential for love, the potential for commitment, the potential for caring and forgiving, suddenly that blossomed that tremendously as well. So we got to blossom in all those ways and make choices, and that's what makes this place such a, such a, 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 a great place to grow up, although our environment isn't nearly as violent and chancy as it was then, our potential to grow up is as much as it ever was. Our potential for fear is starting to um, dissolve a little bit because we don't live in such a fearful place, but yeah. our growing up is a slow, slow process. So that's how we are now in the same process that the larger consciousness system was with us. You see, it had to realize that we and it formed a social system. And the only way that it worked was that if it didn't try to bully, didn't try to demand, didn't try to impose its will or organize, it just had to let the individual units of consciousness do their own thing in their own way and provide a system in which they had choices to enable them to grow up. You see, it couldn't manage it, it had to let it go. And here we are trying to learn the same thing. You see, that it had to learn through us. Now we have to learn it through each other in this environment. It just wasn't, it was too hard to learn this in a big chat room. That's why the larger conscious system was still in the process of learning this when this virtual reality was created. Because it wasn't until this virtual reality was created that the ability to really explore that potential blossomed and bloomed. The potential for love, the potential for fear just blossomed. And the larger conscious system then, growth also sped up. It was able to grow up through the same, you know, for the same reasons that we grow up here. It grew up partly from us being here and trying to interact with us. It learned that love is the only answer that works, that caring is the only thing that helps, and that anything else other than the cooperation, the love, the caring, and sharing, anything else, the downside is much bigger than the upside. So you just have to let things be, give them an environment in which they can grow up, and let it go pretty much however it goes. Uh, you can nudge here and there. You're gonna rearrange the environment, you know, some, but you have to pretty much let it go. So we and the larger conscious system really started to kind of grow up together, although it probably had a lot, a lot of head start. It was already a very, a very clever, and uh, you know, it already could create this virtual reality. So it already was pretty grown up, but not so much at the being level as at the intellectual level. And it had to grow up at the being level in order to optimize this relationship it had now with us. And we have to grow up at the being level in our relationship with each other. So we are doing this really together and the larger conscious system is just what a few hundred billion years ahead of us, you know. It just had a, a head start because it was there for a long time in this growth process that was slow because it didn't have a virtual reality that would give it traction for its growth, so its growth was slow as well. So that's kind of how we all evolved together. Uh, that's why we think the larger conscious system now is the system of love. You know, it's the, it's the core, it's our source, and it's pure love. Well, it wasn't always that way. It had to evolve just like we did. It didn't just somehow pop into being as pure love because it has you know, potential to be 
means it has emotions, it has feelings, it has intellect, it has being level, has all the things that we have, and it needed to struggle to grow up, to lower its entropy, and become love the same as we do. But now it's way ahead of us, and it has given us a better and better environment in which to grow in, and it does more nudging now, and it does very little manipulation. It only does nudging, which you might call manipulation, where it doesn't show, where there's no trace of it. In other words, instead of a heavy hand, it works with a very light touch that uh, has to be hidden within the uncertainty of the situation. So that's well, kind of how we came to, to be here. Yes, it's, it's really interesting.